Jimmy Fallon came to be the head coach of the Huskies. Coach Fallon had many successful years. Quarter of the end zone where Mark Patterson makes the catch with just 34 seconds to go. Paul, great side! Yes! Great Paul get to the end zone! Touchdown, Washington! Every team has its rival, the one they just can't wait to play. The 35, open ground, up the midfield. It's a foot race with the far corner to the 30, down to the 20, the 10-yard line. And when game day comes, it's the one they can't wait to beat. The little, got a man, touchdown Washington, Mario Bailey. Goal from the one, double tight end. Turner, touchdown Washington. For the University of Washington Huskies, it's USC, one of the teams always considered the gold standard of college football. Here come the Huskies and they got them. In 1977, the University of Southern California was a reigning national champion. And the Huskies were a team trying to find their way under a new coach named Don James. Don James in his third year at Washington. At the time, it just looked like it, it, it looked pretty bleak. and. And it's probably easy to forget, but you know Don James will tell you that when they were one and three, he was a little bit worried about his future with the program. You know, he he at that time he was under 500 as a coach, and where were things headed? And at that time, he had a senior quarterback. If that season didn't turn out well, you know, how was the next season going to go? Game day at the University of Washington. USC was coming to town on November 12th of 77, owning a share of four national titles in the previous 10 years. And they were coming to own Husky Stadium as well. Husky football has for years been the most talked about. That was a really good Trojan football team, but Washington was, was in the thick of the, uh, the Rose Bowl race at that time. And, you know, championships, they say, are won in November. Don James always talked about Southern Cal as the measuring stick. Uh, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna be the best in, in this part of the world, you have to beat the best. And USC was always that team for him. And uh, any win over USC was significant. Warren Moon then wastes no time putting the football game out of reach. At the helm of the Huskies was quarterback Warren Moon, a transplant from Los Angeles. Moon never aspired to USC or UCLA for one reason. On game day, he always wanted to be the starting quarterback. Don James made that happen. I came to the University of Washington where Don James gave me a chance to compete at the quarterback spot in the first year and he told me how he was going to try and rebuild this team through recruiting and, and get the proper talent here to where we could compete in this conference. We're on second and goal, Warren fakes inside, rolls. We were convinced that he, he was a prospect. When you have a, you know, a black quarterback and white quarterback, and I think we had a couple of each, you, you want to make sure you, your evaluation system is, is fair. And we did everything. We logged every pass, every catch, every, we videoed him. And so uh, he won the job. The combination of being an African-American at a quarterback position and coming out of a one-year junior college, uh, you know, that didn't always play like, OK, well, where are we getting the the hero coming out of high school. So he struggled and the, and the press used that sort of a thing on him. And the support that we needed around him, it took a year to, to put that together. It was tough to be here and, and play quarterback for Afro-American. And, um, but Warren was gonna make sure that no matter what, he was gonna play another position. I think at that time, they were kind of more ready for a change of letting the Afro-American play. Moon, you know, he had all the capabilities and all the talents to play it, so the University of Washington was kind of more ready to accept African-American plan. Warren just came in here, he, you know, it was the, the racial situation, and I, I said, Warren, it doesn't matter to me what color you are. The best, the best 11 players are going to be out there, and, and it appears as though you're one of the best players we've got out there and you're gonna play and uh, we're not just gonna give you a job and let you have it regardless. But, uh, but he, he, he kept getting better and that's, that's what good athletes do, they do get better. While Moon's stock was rising as a QB, it wasn't translating into the win column fast enough. But Moon was a competitor and a leader and by his senior year in 1977, there were only so many games left to win. Everything that we still wanted to realize was still in front of us. We just needed to start playing better football, 
start being a little bit more disciplined because some of the problems in those games were guys, you know, sneaking out after curfew and that type of thing. And, and uh, we had some disciplinary problems on our team. So our leadership got together. The Huskies opened at home against tough Mississippi State of the Southeastern Conference, and it turned into a fumbling afternoon for both teams, with the Bulldogs coughing up the football six times and the Huskies recovering three of them. The Huskies lost the 77 opener against number 16 Mississippi State before getting a win against San Jose State in front of a very small Husky Stadium crowd of only 36,000 fans. Warren Moon, who threw for 151 yards and rushed for 26 more, calls his own number. With the aid of a super fake, goes in to score. But for the second week in a row, the Huskies lose in a last-second field goal, this time 19-17. Two two-point losses at Syracuse and Minnesota set up a road trip to Eugene with the season and maybe James' tenure at UW hanging in the balance. And what a conference debut it turns out to be, with the Huskies dominating play and taking advantage of every Oregon mistake. Kyle Heinrich finally recovering the loose football for the Huskies. The real turnaround of that season was they went down to Oregon and beat Oregon 54 to nothing. And I think it got everybody to rebuy into everything that was going on because I think there were some players who were beginning to doubt just a little bit where, where, where were things going when they were one and three. And I think they had some real soul searching in the week prior to that Oregon game. The Huskies then drive to the goal line where Joe Steele goes in to score behind a good block and the route is on. That was the year that uh, we started one and three and we all of a sudden showed up in Autzen Stadium, Oregon, and went on beating Oregon 54 nothing. It was really the turning around of, of the program in the early Don James era, and uh, it was exciting. And we just kind of started rolling from there. So we said, we still can win our, our conference, even though we're off to this slow start, but you gotta forget about what we've done and, and, and try and make the improvements and go forward, and that's kind of what we did. We were not kind of known up to that point as the contender in the Pac-10. USC was the team and we were kind of the little brother. Slow out of the gate, the Husky season was gathering momentum, but with the national champions rolling into town, the Huskies were looking up, not down at their rivals. Much of the offense at USC will be entrusted to Charlie White who succeeds Ricky Bell at tailback. White filled in impressively when Bell was injured last year, rolling up 744 yards and nine touchdowns in little more than a half season. Trojan fans are hopeful White will continue the line of extraordinary tailbacks dating back to Mike Garrett, including Anthony Davis, Ricky Bell, and of course, O.J. Simpson. We had tremendous respect for the SC program just because they had so much tradition starting all the way back in, you know, in the 60s with O.J. Simpson and all those great teams and then moving on up. And they were always the team to beat in the Pac-8 Pac at that time, no question about it. And this game had a little bit more meaning because we're in the race at this particular time. We have to beat USC in order to uh, try and realize what we want to realize, which is a Pac-8 championship and possibly go to the Rose Bowl. So the respect was there. They were a great football team. Charlie White was their tailback, and Anthony Munoz was their, you know, offensive tackle, and they were loaded and had a great team. We were not kind of known up to that point as the contender in the Pac-10. USC was the team, and we were kind of the little brother. I remember that game uh, emphatically. It was a. It turned into one of those Seattle kind of days. Uh, the weather got a little nasty, and I think that kind of started the notion that. Uh, you know, when the California teams came to Seattle, the worse the weather, the better. Uh, bring it on. The Huskies play host to the USC Trojans on homecoming weekend at Husky Stadium before 59,000 plus. On their first possession, the Dogs welcome the USC national champs to Husky Stadium. Moon engineers a drive right into the USC end zone. For a touchdown to put the Huskies out in front. The Husky Stadium goes wild with excitement. That was a game we knew we had to get off to a good start, and, and I, we were able to jump ahead in that football game early and, and get, get a lead, get some momentum, get our crowd into the football game. We got out in front of them, and, you know, the fans got into it, and it, and it was a crowded day that day. You know, the place was going crazy, and it was just from the, from the, day, from the time we walked on the field to the time we walked off the field, it was just man. The Husky defense also rises to the occasion and the Trojans try to get back into the game but the Huskies outstanding defensive tackles Dave Browning and Doug Martin are right there to drop Rob Hurdle for a loss. 
The Trojans struggled to put any points on the board. And when they did, the Huskies stormed right back to answer. Warren Moon throws to Spider Gaines for 19 yards, and the two are letter perfect as the Huskies continue to play the best football in the Pac-8 Conference, much to the delight of the Husky players and their fans. On this Saturday, the Trojans were the ones really getting rained on. The Husky defense again forces the Trojans to give up the football. This time, senior co-captain Mike Rohrabach comes busting through to block the punt and give the offense another opportunity to score. The weather wasn't that bad early in the ball game, and uh, but the rain started to come later in the ball game, and that was kind of to our advantage because USC had to try and throw it every down to get back into the game, and with the rain and the wind the way it was blowing, it was to our advantage, no question about it. If you were looking for a bright spot on the field, it was Warren Moon's maturity as a quarterback. He was just a unique kind of a guy. He was a, definitely a, a really solid leader on the field. A lot of times when guys get in the huddle, you can see when they come out of the huddle that they've been talking to somebody they believe in. Warren was a lot like that. Warren Moon, who was voted the co-player of the year in the Pac-8 Conference, shows off his throwing ability with his 26-yard beauty to Spider Gaines for six more points for Washington. And Moon had the long ball. Moon had the long ball. I think he worked on the intermediate, intermediate pass, but as far as putting that ball up and having somebody run under it, Moon was really good at that. Being that Moon was so tall that he had the capability of like controlling and putting pressure on the defense as far as getting outside, breaking the pocket. Being a building program was over. Now we are contending champions from that point on with Don. By the end of that afternoon, the field looked like a Civil War battleground. SC surrendered to the Huskies, losing 28 to 10. As you go back, at least in my time, that's as significant a win as I've ever seen at Husky Stadium because it really established Washington as a, uh, a legitimately elite program. And of course, the way they finished the season only reinforced that. It truly was the pivotal game of Don's career. I believe, and uh, it was to establish us as the power and taking that power away from USC. And so all of a sudden, the, the program being a building program was over. Now we are contending champions from that point on with Don. It was the first, in my opinion, that Don James kind of major, major victory because it was against a team that just came off the national championship. My dad recruited Southern California and so uh, anytime that you could go down or you could, a, a team would come up here or you go down to California, you could beat a USC or a UCLA and then it was going to help through you in recruiting. Anytime that the Huskies won on defense, my dad was the defensive coordinator, you know, I felt tremendous sense of pride and it was happy times in our house on, on a Saturday night. The Husky win over USC became a national story. Linebacker Michael Jackson became Sports Illustrated's Defensive Player of the Week and a team riddled with a few doubts a few weeks earlier now had their sights firmly locked onto a Rose Bowl berth. It was another one of Don's strengths was that you always had your projection of how good you want to be and you always wanted to have things on the wall that were sayings about uh, that you could anchor into about what this team needs most in order to uh, to achieve the level that uh, that a Rose Bowl is at what you're going to do in order to get us into a Rose Bowl that year Don was constantly working to make sure that every player with his personality was given a way so that they could set goals for themselves that were achievable at a level that, uh, that he would think was capable. The Huskies finish their season with a 7-4 record and that earns them a chance to play another powerhouse, Michigan, in the Rose Bowl. Don James, the Huskies and the Rose Bowl, there's a first time for everything.
we were seven and four going in that Rose Bowl after going starting one and three. Um, so you know that was a real great time, and the city of Seattle, you know, really got behind the Husky program. And it'd been since you know the early '60s since we'd been to the Rose Bowl, so it was a 13, 14 year drought. And uh, Don James, you know, all of a sudden, you know, really started to turn this program around. And and when you get the success, you get the next national exposure of the Rose Bowl, the national exposure of beating USC. All of a sudden, it really helps with recruiting. You know, Washington was really becoming, you know, one of the Pac-8 schools to go to. It was the early stage development of the program that, you know, that Don, you know, built and sustained for 18 years. They had some very good players on that football team. I mean, you, you know, Michael Jackson, Nesby Glasgow, come on. I mean, there was, you know, Blair Bush and Joe Steele and Ronnie Rowland. And I mean, they had some really good football players. And uh, I don't think it surprised me as much as it did a lot of other people. Uh, that they'd get to a bowl game or the Rose Bowl game. You know, Washington was a nice story going into the game, but uh, it was another one where nationally everybody just figured Michigan was going to roll all over them. fans were looking forward to the 1977 season and for good reason because the Huskies had all the potential in the world but no one would have dreamed that Washington would really win the Pac-8 Conference Championship it was a football season that Husky fans will be talking about for years on January 2nd 1978 Don James and the Huskies meet Bo Schembechler and the Michigan Wolverines in Pasadena the sports writers have already written the story Michigan wins and wins big On their first drive of the game, the Huskies get busy, and Warren Moon wastes no time in showing off his talents. Moon puts his stamp on the very first score of the game. On their next possession, Moon goes deep, and Michigan is playing catch-up early in the game. They just jumped on Michigan early. They really caught them by surprise coming out throwing. They had some big plays throwing. They had the big fake punt that also kind of caught Michigan off guard. I mean, they really just came out from the start, and you know, everybody had assumed, you know, Washington was a nice story going into the game, but it was another one where Nationally, everybody just figured Michigan was going to rule all over them, and, and you know, up to that point, Bo Schembechler had not—he, you know—he had not won a Rose Bowl, so everybody was just, you know, this was this was now when Bo, Bo Schembechler is finally going to win his Rose Bowl. The Wolverines never give up, finding a way to claw back into it. But the Huskies are just as relentless on their next possession. Moon only gets more deadly in the passing game. Warren Moon, obviously, in his athleticism, just jumped out at you. You watch him run. He was just a, such a graceful runner. Uh, again, kind of a long and, and lean guy. But uh, the thing that first struck you, uh, I think, most about Warren Moon, well, that ball just such a tight spiral. Uh, beautiful thrower of the football. In the, and I remember thinking that. Uh, the first time I watched him throw, you, you know, it's like uh, maybe watching a, a Nolan Ryan throw a throw a baseball for the first time. You just marvel at uh, uh, the technical aspects of it. And Warren always threw a beautiful ball, and if nothing else, that got better as his uh, his career went on. By the third quarter, Bo Schembechler's Wolverines are a long way from the headline that they were expecting in the morning papers. By the fourth quarter, the Michigan defense simply is wearing down.
Michigan tries to close the gap late in the game. The Huskies' response, not today. It was kind of a hallmark of Don James being able to take some time and figure out what's a weakness I can exploit in the other team. And, and, in, and in that game, um, Washington was a talented team. The Dogs are a talented team that the entire country is watching roll over Michigan. Offense, defense, special teams. In this Rose Bowl, every Husky player rose to the occasion. That was fantastic. I, I just think for the Husky fans and being at that Rose Bowl, I, it was so exciting to be there, witness it, you know, watch the win, and celebrate with the rest of the Husky fans after the game. It was just unbelievable. It was great fun. Love to do it again. When the game ended, the Riders were scrambling to retype their stories. The Huskies beat Michigan 27 to 20, and the best part of this happy ending is the player of the game, Los Angeles' own Warren Moon. the greatest way to close it out. Every goal I set for myself at the end of the year has been accomplished and I think we've proved to the rest of the nation now that the Huskies can play nationally ranked football. It was a dream come true, no question about it, but it was always a goal of ours and something that everybody on our football team always felt like we had a chance to get to. The Huskies left Seattle with great expectations. And after their triumph in Pasadena, the Dogs return as great champions, cheered on by hundreds of family members and friends. The 77th season and the Rose Bowl win signaled the arrival of the James Gang and ushered in a golden age of UW football. And with Don James at the helm, countless more greatest moments at Husky Stadium were still to come. Next time on Greatest Moments at Husky Stadium. In the 81 Apple Cup, the Huskies put the Cougs back in their rightful place and headed to the Rose Bowl themselves. How do you like them apples? Apples.